This is the news on the hour brought to you from the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria Eastern and Television. I am Zubechi Frank. You are welcome. The Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion Primates, the Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, Archbishops, Bishops and other officials visited the official proposed permanent camping site of the church, which is located at Koita in Gwagolada Area Council of the FCT. ACNN News correspondent Charles Philip Wakalam was there and has the report. On its quest for permanent camping ground for the activities of the church, the Anglican Church of Nigeria, led by the primate, Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, the Dean, Most Reverend Ali Buba Lamido, the primate elect, Most Reverend Henry Ndokoba, other archbishops, bishops, Church of Nigeria General Secretary, Venerable Dr. Paul Dajo and others visited the large expanse of land already purchased for the groundbreaking in order for work to start there in earnest. Bethel Anglican Camp. This plaque was unveiled by the Most Reverend Nicholas, Archbishop, Metropolitan and primate of all Nigeria, Anglican community, assisted by archbishops and bishops of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican communion, on Friday, 15th November, 2019. During the visit, the primate and others had a little tour of the land led by the dean who urged the archbishops and bishops to help make the vision a reality. One of the reasons why you are here is to see the vast the massive land and what we are doing. God bless you that we don't kill this vision. During interview with ACNN, the primate affirmed that the campground is for the activities of the Church of Nigeria. This is the land that uh, we purchased in order to create a camp for the activities of the Church of Nigeria, the men, the women, the youth, the children. So it's... Um, for a comprehensive activities of the church. In other words, our growth actually depends on it. Work has started, you can see that's why we are fencing it. Immediately after that, we move to the next stage, the next level. And while still speaking, he encouraged the incoming primates to stop at nothing in seeing the work takes full speed. It's good that he's here, so that he will know that it's not something to wait is something that we have to move. It's a large place, but we are large also as a church. And if the responsibility is properly shared, we will handle it. The most reverend Buba Lamido went further to explain the plans of the church concerning erecting edifices and also how funds will be raised for the structures. The size is four kilometers square. So it's a very large portion of land, very massive. Like you see, we have DIFCON, the gathering of Christians. This brings about many Christians, thousands. We will also have something like a guest house. When people come for retreat, that is where they will live. There may be a chapel. And uh, we will make use of the natural resources on ground to develop so it will be an integrated kind of establishment for the Anglican Communion in Nigeria. It has been purchased from the church account. And we are doing this work also from church account. But we are now mobilizing the provinces of our church to gather money so that we begin to build. We are hopeful that this place will be built up in, in very uh, good time. Now, when that is done, we will have a place we will call our own, uh, the Anglican Communion. Charles Philip Wakola, ACNN TV News. 
In times like this, when people are living helplessly and hopelessly, there is only one source to turn to. That source is the Almighty God who has the power to lift the poor from the dark hill and to give hope to the hopeless. Now, this was the admonition from the Venerable Dr. Stanley Mweze, a clergy in the Anglican Communion. According to him, anyone who wants to receive from God must have the full knowledge of his personality. So generally, I want to say that this team is very, very, very apt, especially in a time like this, where you can see people living hopelessly, helplessly, asking from where comes their help. By implication, man's help must always come from God. Whatever we need in life, it's only God that can supply it. Whether we need children is God. We need a life partner is God. We need promotion is God. We need the elevation of to any status is God. Every protection is God. So we need to know God the more and walk with him and make him to be our guide, to be our protector. It's God has said in Psalm 46, verse 10, say be still and know that I am God. And that shows that God is not struggling with anybody. He's not struggling with any force or whatever thing. His power is absolute. His power is, is unlimited. His power cannot be challenged by any other. God has raised some people, some nations at a point in time. But when they became disobedient, God put them down. So I'm not afraid of what is happening in the world today because I know that our Redeemer lived. He will always be there for us to help us to overcome every form of challenge that may come our way. Some Anglican clerics have admonished the body of Christ and Nigerians to trust in no other name than the Almighty God, who him alone has the capability to save and help his children in times of difficulty. According to them, men can fail the society and politicians can fail, but God is the only one who can never disappoint those whose trust and hope are in him. They made this known in an interview with ACNN News correspondent Mwaneo Gechuku in Abuja. The society have failed us. Um, is it the politics? Is it those in power? We found out that it's really uh, everybody is helpless. Even those in power, uh, they are helpless about the happenings around us. So our trust and our confidence have to be built upon God because he's the one who have helped in the past. He's the one also who has the capability of helping us now and even in the future. So our hope must be built on him so that we can always um, receive that help uh, from him as at, uh, at the point when we call him. Because even the scripture said we should call upon him in the days of trouble that he will answer us. So at every point where we find ourselves in the situation where it seems as if all hope is lost, our confidence must be built on him so that he can help us out of difficult situations that we find ourselves, especially in our nation, Nigeria now, where there is insecurity everywhere, there is kidnapping, there is ambanditry and all. So we have to put our trust in him for him to help us because all help, all our trust and our help is built on him. I must say that uh, this year's edition is uh, something that uh, has been remarkable, quite different from other years. and. Uh, I believe um, as we go on and on, it only continues to get better and better every day. So um, when we talk about uh, God our help in ages past, I consider the key word as help. And I have known God to be someone who does not fail. God cannot and will never fail in time of need. He's always there to help. We are thankful to God for this opportunity. And we also thank our church fathers for this vision. Uh, I can say it has come to stay, and personally it has been a time for spiritual renewal, the, the messages, the prayer session, the testimonies. It has been of a great encounter with God. It has been a gathering of eagles, and experiencing God anew, and it, uh, it is my earnest prayer and desire that as men gather together in DIFCOM, they will come to see God anew, afresh, and encounter him for themselves. The theme is uh, appropriate, it is timely, uh, because of the acts and power of God that we have seen uh, in the past. 
It's enough for us to trust him for today and even for tomorrow. And uh, I would like to add, uh, counsel the body of Christ, counsel our country as a whole uh, to keep trusting the Lord. Lent he has brought us as a people, as a church, and as a nation, we can trust him that no matter the hurdles, no matter the mountains and the valleys, uh, we will make it to the promised land, even in our individual lives. Women have been nudged to be mothers of faith, of power, and of value in their homes, the church, and the society at large, as this will help them to raise godly children who will be used mightily by God. This was the assertion of Mrs. Temitayo Toki as she calls on women to imitate Queen Esther in the Bible who stood in the gap for the people in prayers and fasting, stressing that women should lead with the fear of God and all sincerity when given the opportunity to lead. As a mother who is a woman of faith, a mother of power and a mother of valor in the home, in the church and in the society at large. Those three roles were played by Esther successfully, showing that she's a woman of virtue. Because what her uncle told her, she, the Bible may cause to understand that she obeyed. And to let us know that she's a woman of power, a woman of faith, she told her people to fast on her behalf. And she herself will go and fast. Many people will say, fast for me. They will not join in the fasting. But to let us know that Esther was a woman of faith and a woman of power, also joined in the fasting. This is a great virtue and, a, and an example for women and mothers to emulate. She also showed that she's a woman who is strong in battle. And that also we can do. You know, many at times women may not have the strength to go to battle. Women may not have the grace to lead. But on our knees, we can finish every battle. And that is very, very important. And if we have an opportunity to lead at one time or the other, we have to do it with all seriousness and with all wisdom of God. Because Esther also applied wisdom. So as a woman in the house, we have to be a woman who, who will be filled with the wisdom of God and be ready to take every step according to the leading of the law. With that, we'll be able to succeed. With that, we'll be able to change people around us for good. With that, we'll be able to change the nation if we are given any button. Away from church news now, Senator representing Natsarawa West Senatorial District Adamu Abdullahi has appealed to President Muhammadu Buhari to resist pressure on him to open the nation's land borders from now. Abdullahi, who is a former governor of Natsarawa State, commended Buhari for standing out to the challenges of insecurity. He argued that the border closure was scoring many ills, afflicting the nation, including the failing economy and corruption menace. The senator who addressed journalists on the issue said that the opposition to border closure was coming mainly from two main quarters. He said neighboring nations, smugglers and the profiters of the border closure were mounting pressure on the president to reopen the border adding that the border closure must continue until the unbridled appetites for foreign consumption are brought to perpetual control. He stressed the Nigerians must be made to emulate other countries who consume what they produce. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has said the federal government will mandate the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, to con to come up with new regulation for internet and mainstream broadcast organizations. Mr. Lai Mohammed disclosed this in Abuja after he received reports from the committee inaugurated last month to study and make recommendations on the government's proposals to reform the NBC, where he urged the NBC to review its fines for breaches relating to hate speeches and further recommended the suspension of broadcast license for organizations that willfully repeat infractions on three occasions.
Gentlemen, I've read the report and I'm quite delighted and satisfied with it. In line with Mr. President's directive, the Commission will be mandated to amend the code through new regulations to reflect the following. One, upward review of fines from 500,000 to 5 million naira for breaches relating to hate speeches, inciting comments, and indecency. And willful repeat of infractions on three occasions after levying fine and paying the fine, or the station will attract immediate suspension of license. Two, upgrade of breach of political comments relating to hate speeches and divisive comments to class A offense from class B offense in the broadcasting code. Over the years, there has been no love lost between the regulator and the industry. Government believes that a trustworthy relationship is key to development of the industry. As a way of establishing that collaboration between the industry and the regulator, and to ensure transparency, the NBC Act will be amended to make provision for the appointment of a representative of the Broadcasters Union for both public and private broadcasters on the board of the commission. And finally, we will be taking action to ensure that the approval of broadcast license aligns with the government's efforts in the ease of Still to come after the break, Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn clashed over Brexit in the first TV election debate. Please stay tuned. By the power of the Almighty God, we render it non and void in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know what that situation is. Maybe you have been threatened in your marriage. Receive your healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Watch out for prayer hour 12 noon every Friday. You are welcome back and thanks for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. To be up to date with our news and other programs, download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store. And now to international scene. The Diocesan Bishop of the West, USA and Canada, and Missionary Bishop of Ghana, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, the Right Reverend Dr. Felix Oji, has appreciated Dr. King and the leadership of Juliana King University, Houston, Texas, USA, for inviting him to deliver a commencement address at the graduation ceremony of the university adding that it is a great honor to be considered for the Doctor of Divinity Honoris Causa awarded him by the institution. Congratulating the graduating students, Bishop Orji stressed that their hard work gotten them to this point, and he prayed that the Lord God in his great kindness will grant them success and shower them with blessings so that in all things they will live and lead for his glory. According to him, for one to be a successful leader, he must be willing to surrender his self-interest, self-preservation, and must be willing to pay the price of putting God and his glory at the center of his leadership, as well as living the life of commitment to prayer and commitment to lead under the authority of his written words. The White House attacked its own top Ukraine official as he testified to an impeachment hearing that a phone call made by the president was improper and had left him in shock. Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman told Congress that President Donald Trump made inappropriate political demands of the Ukraine president, saying the hearings are investigating whether Mr. Trump abused his presidential power. As he described his reaction to hearing a call between President Trump and his Ukraine counterpart, President Volodymyr Zelensky, Colonel Vindman, came under attack by the official White House Twitter account, 
which posted a critical quote from his former boss on the NSC, questioning his judgment. Republican congressman pressed Colonel Vindman on the remark and questioned his loyalty to the U.S., asking about instances in which Ukrainian officials approached him about becoming the country's defense minister. Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn have clashed over Brexit in the first TV election debate of the campaign. Mr. Johnson promised to end this national misery and said Labour has offered only division and deadlock. As Mr. Corbyn said, Labour would get Brexit sorted by giving the people the final say. The two leaders also locked horns over the NHS trust and leadership, the future of Scotland and the royal family. The Conservative government is failing. It's failed on the economy on the climate crisis, the National Health Service, and on Brexit. But the Prime Minister judged it was worth the risk to hammer home one key message. If you vote for us, we have a deal that is ready to go. Not credible, insisted Mr Corbyn. The idea that the Prime Minister Boris Johnson's deal can be dealt with and finished by the end of January is such nonsense. You're not going to get it done in a few months, and you know that perfectly well. Right. Absolutely, because uh, people said, people don't forget, people said that we couldn't do a new deal in three months. Uh, people said th that they would never open up the treaty. They said it was impossible to do. Actually, we succeeded. Uh, I, I hear what people say about... about no, uh, we, we have ample time to do a fantastic uh, free trade deal. A document here. And now to sports news. Jose Morijo has been appointed the new Tottenham Hotspur head coach to replace the sacked Mauricio Pochettino. The Portuguese former Chelsea and Manchester United manager signed a contract until the end of the 2022-2023 season. Pochettino for the seven transformed sports fortunes in 2014. Now, though he failed to win a trophy, he took the club to the Champions League final for the first time in their history just six months ago. But the Argentine was sacked with Tottenham languishing 14th in England's Premier League after picking up just three wins from their opening 12 games. Mabrijo, who has won domestic titles in a record four different countries, stated that he is excited to be joining a club with such a great heritage and such passionate supporters. While reacting, sports chairman Daniel Levy said they are happy to have one of the most successful managers in football and also believes that he will bring energy and belief to the dressing room. Bayern Munich attacker Sergi Gnabry hit a hat-trick and Leon Goretzka stopped twice as Germany defeated Northern Ireland 6-1 in their final match of 2019 a win that ensured them top spot in the UEFA Euro 2020 qualifying Group C standings. The host dominated the ball in the opening exchanges but fell behind against the run of play when Michael Smith's stunning first-time strike from the edge of the box left Marc-Andre Ter Sturgeon no chance. Shuttle to help it in there. Oh, and struck well! Struck beautifully! Michael Smith, his first international goal, and hasn't he picked his moment and the manner as well? Michael O'Neill, impassive, but inside must be filled with sheer delight. And it'll be fair to say that Michael Smith has never hit a ball as well. Great work from Hector Gnabry on the turn, venomous. And the equaliser arrives for Germany. And it's an example of what he is producing on a regular basis at the moment. The turn and a devastating finish. And that's it on the news on the hour. I want to thank you for watching. I am Zubichi Frank.